Thank you for watching this project help video for lesson 13. I will help you answer each question in the project by providing step-by-step -step instructions using example problems. A good strategy might be to pause the video after each example and then work the corresponding problem in your project. All right, let's begin. Question one. For every project I grade in Algebra 1A, I find that eight of them watch the project videos. For every project I grade in Algebra 1B, I find that 12 of them watch the project videos. There are at least 48 students that watch the videos all together. Using X to represent the number of students that watch the videos in Algebra 1A, and Y to represent the number of students that watch the videos in 1B, write an inequality to represent this situation. All right, so one of the things that kind of pops out to me is this word here, all together. So that, that implies a sum. That means like if I add up the projects that I watched and who watched them in 1A and who watched the projects in 1B and I add those together, that's going to be according to this at least 48. That means 48 or more. All right, so in this case, if we're using X to represent the number of students that watch the videos in 1A, then the total number of students can be represented by 8X. And then if I using Y to represent the number of students that watch the videos in 1B, all right, and then we have 12 of those for every one, then that total number of students can be represented by 12 Y. Right, then it says all together, that means if I add these all together, we have at least 48. All right, and the word at least means greater than or equal to, in this case, 48. All right, so the number of projects graded in Algebra 1B is at least three times higher than the number of proje projects graded in Algebra 1A. Use X to represent the number of projects graded in Algebra 1A and Y to represent the number of projects graded in Algebra 1B. And now we're going to write an inequality that compares the number of projects graded. All right, so in this case, one you know, Algebra 1B is described in terms of Algebra 1A. And it says here that the number of project, projects, excuse me, graded in 1B is three times that of 1A. So that's what I mean by using, describing one in terms of the other. 1B is being described in terms of 1A. And in this case, we're using Y to represent the number of projects graded in 1B. So we're going to say that the number of projects Y graded in 1B is at least. Remember, that word at least means greater than or equal to again. So is at least greater than or equal to three times the number of projects in 1A. And one, the number in 1A is X. So I'll go ahead and see how this translates back from the math and equality to the words. Remember, y is the number graded in 1b. So this is saying the amount of projects graded in Algebra 1b is at least three times the number of projects in 1a. That's exactly what this says. And then finally, question three want you to explain why it is more useful to write one inequality in standard form, the one that we had in question one, and why it is more useful to write the inequality in slope intercept form for question two. And it has to do with how the uh, information was given to us, right, when we wrote the inequalities. In question one, the information was given to us in terms of a sum. It's saying that this thing added up with this thing is greater than something else or less than something else. So they're telling us in terms of some total. All right, so when you have two things adding up all together to equal some total, or in this case, be greater than or equal to a total, it's just much more natural to write that inequality how we read it, which would be in standard form. Here we have two different things adding all together to be greater than or equal to, in this case, some total, in this case, 48. That's in contrast to question number two, 
where remember one variable was described in terms of another variable. They told us how many projects an Algebra B had by comparing it to the number of ones in Algebra 1A. So that implies an inequality that's written in this case slope intercept form because the one variable that's by itself, the y, right, then that kind of makes it so that we can write it as the variable, in this case, Algebra 1B projects graded is greater than and then compare it to the other number of projects graded in Algebra 1A. So in short, when I'm trying to explain why it is more useful to write it in standard form, well, I would say that any type of word problem where you have something adding up or subtracting to equal some total, right, is going to be more natural to write in standard form. Whereas when you have something that's given to you when one variable is being described in terms of another variable, then it's more natural to write it in slope intercept form because you already have one of the variables by itself in that uh, slope intercept form and then you're comparing it to the other one.